Hi, and welcome. I'm Gavin Lon. Please join me as we build a very basic shopping cart application using Blazor WebAssembly. A few of the significant technologies we'll use for building our application are as follows. The latest version of Visual Studio, which is Visual Studio 2022. And we'll use the Community Edition for Windows. .NET 6, which is at the time of creating this video the latest version of .NET. It was released in November of 2021. SQL Server 2019. Blazor WebAssembly. We'll use Bootstrap version 5 for layout and styling purposes. We'll build a RESTful MVC Web API project for handling database-related functionality and returning relevant data from the server to our client-side Blazor application. All technologies used for the development of this application can be downloaded free of charge. Please see below in the description the locations of where you are able to download the relevant technologies for free. We are going to integrate a payment gateway powered by PayPal into our application so that a user can use their PayPal account or a valid debit or credit card to pay for the items that are purchased through our online shopping cart application. Blazor is a relatively new feature of ASP.NET. It offers two hosting models, a server-side hosting model and a client-side hosting model. We are going to use the client-side hosting model for the development of our shopping cart application. The significance of this hosting model is that the C-sharp code runs directly within our browsers. What makes this possible is a technology named WebAssembly. In recent years, the creation of SPA applications or single-page applications have become very popular as web solutions. Up until fairly recently, JavaScript frameworks like Angular or React have been the available choices for the creation of SPA applications. With Blazor, we are now able to create our single-page applications using c -sharp. We don't necessarily need to depend on JavaScript for the creation of our interactive UI code. We can create this code using c -sharp. In this application, however, the payment gateway provided by PayPal is coded in JavaScript. So we will use Blazor's interoperability functionality with JavaScript to interact with the relevant JavaScript PayPal code. For content like this and much more, please consider subscribing and please ring the bell so that you'll be notified of future content. If you like this video, please hit the like button and please feel free to share this video with anyone you feel may benefit from its content. If you'd like to thank me by buying me a coffee, I've included a link to my Buy Me A Coffee webpage below in the description. I've also included a PayPal Me link below in the description if you'd prefer to use PayPal to support the channel. Any support is greatly appreciated a special thank you to those people who have supported the channel either via PayPal or buy me a coffee. You are awesome. Thank you so much. So let's get started. Let's create our Blazor solution. Let's fire up Visual Studio 2022. Select Create New Project. Let's choose the appropriate project template. Blazor WebAssembly app. Let's name our solution Shop Online Solution. Let's name the Blazor project shoponline.web. Great. Let's add a new project to our solution where we'll create our RESTful Web API functionality. So let's ensure that we choose the correct project template. Let's name our project shoponline.api. Notice that for the authentication type, we are choosing none. At this stage, we are not going to implement membership functionality, which of course includes login and registration functionality. So we can evolve the code at a later stage to include login, registration functionality, along with authentication and authorization functionality. 
In this part of the development of this application, we'll focus purely on the shopping cart functionality. We want to run our application on the latest version of .NET, .NET 6. Note that we have enabled open API support. By doing this, the Swashbuckle NuGet package will be automatically installed and the appropriate Swagger middleware will be automatically configured appropriately within our project. One of the advantages of this is when we run our Web API project interactively, we'll be able to test our Web API code through our browsers even before we have developed any front end code. So a basic UI will automatically be created for this purpose for us. When we run our application interactively, we'll be able to test each of our action methods through the relevant automatically created web-based UI. Note that you can also use a tool like Postman to test your web API functionality. I won't be using Postman during the development of this application. I've included an appropriate link in the description for those of you who wish to use Postman as a test facility for your web API code. We are going to build our database using Code First Migrations and Entity Framework Core. Migrations allow us to evolve our database without losing data or database objects. So by using plain old c -sharp classes, we can build the database entities that we wish to include within our shopping cart application. Once we have created relevant entity-related c -sharp classes, we'll look at an entity relationship diagram that represents our shopping cart application's database design. Let's add a folder named Entities to our project. This is where the classes that will represent our database entities will reside. So let's create a class named Cart to represent the Cart entity. So let's add two public properties to this class, ID as integer and user ID as integer. Let's add a new class named cart item. This entity represents an item that has been added to the user's shopping cart. So let's add an integer property named ID. Let's add an integer property named cart ID. This property represents a foreign key field and is used to join the cart entity to the cart item entity. So the cart entity has a one-to-many relationship with the cart item entity. This denotes that many cart items can be included within one particular shopping cart. Let's include an integer property named Product ID. Lastly, let's include an integer property named QTY, representing the quantity or number of a particular product that may be included within a particular shopping cart. Let's create a new class representing the product entity. The product entity will have a one-to-many relationship with the cart item entity. This denotes that a product can be included many times across many different shopping carts. Let's add an integer property named ID. Let's add a string property named name. Let's add a string property named description. Let's add a string property named image URL. Let's create a property of type decimal named price. Let's create a property of type integer named QTY. Lastly, let's add a property of type integer named category ID. The category ID property represents a foreign key from the product category entity, the code for which we are about to implement.
So let's create a class named product category. This entity has a one-to-many relationship with the product entity. Let's add a public property named ID. Note that when a property is named ID, by convention, Entity Framework Core will designate the ID property as representative of the relevant entity's primary key. Let's add a property of type string and name this property name. And lastly, let's create a class to represent our user entity, which of course represents a user of our application. Note that I've included this entity as a temporary substitute for a membership facility, like for example, Microsoft Identity, so that we can focus on the shopping cart workflows and not be distracted by the membership functionality that we can implement in a later tutorial. So let's add an integer property named ID. Let's add a string property named Username. So if we look at this entity relationship diagram, we can see the relationships between our entities. The cart entity has a one-to-many relationship with the cart item entity. The product entity has a one-to-many relationship with the cart item entity. The product category entity has a one-to-many relationship with the product entity. The user entity has a one-to-one -one relationship with the cart entity. So this basically means each user can only have one shopping cart within our application. If you look at the SQL Server Management Studio that is installed on my local machine, you can see that I've already generated a database through EF Core. This was done when I was developing the prototype for this application. So we are now going to use EF Core to generate a database for our shopping cart application. The classes that we have just created representing our entities will be used by EF Core to generate the corresponding database tables within a database that EF Core will create for us. In order to generate our database with the relevant tables through Visual Studio, let's install two NuGet packages. To do this, right click the dependencies node within our shoponline.api project. Click the Manage NuGet Packages menu item. Click the Browse tab on the NuGet Package Manager dialog. Let's search for Entity Framework Core.SQL Server. And this is the package we want to install. Let's click the Install button, then the I Accept button. Great. Let's search for the second package that we need to install. The reason we are installing this package is because we want to run our migrations from within Visual Studio, as opposed to using the .NET CLI for this purpose. Note that you would use different commands when running migration commands using the .NET CLI, as opposed to the commands you would run when using Visual Studio. So let's search for Entity Framework Core .tools. And this is the package we want. Let's install the Microsoft.EntityFrameworkCore.Tools NuGet package. The next step is we must configure a connection string in order to connect our application with the database that we wish to create using Entity Framework Core code first migrations. So let's open the app settings.json file within our shoponline.web project. Within the connection string that I'm configuring here, I'm including my server name, which is Gavin Lons PC, 
the database, which I wish to name Shop Online, and we are going to use a trusted connection to connect our shopping cart application's web API to our database. So let's include trusted underscore connection equals true within our connection string. Note that I have named my connection string shop online connection. Let's create our database context class. Let's first create a folder named data within our shop online.api project. Let's add a class named shop online db context to our new data folder. So in order to make this class represent our EF core database context, we need to implement code so that our shop online db context class inherits from EF core's db context class. You can see there's a red squiggly line under db context. This is because we haven't yet brought in the Microsoft.entity framework core namespace. An easy way to include the appropriate using directive through Visual Studio is to press control period and then select the appropriate menu item from the menu that is presented to us through Visual Studio. Let's create the constructor for our shop online DB context class. We must add a parameter to the constructor that we have just generated. The parameter is named options and is of the generic type DB context options, which has the data type shop online DB context passed as an argument to it. We can then write code to pass the argument that will be passed to our shop online DB context class constructor to the base class from which it inherits, i.e., the DB context class. Now, because I want to focus on the shopping cart workflows at this stage and don't want us to be distracted by the implementation of administrative CRUD operation functionality, we are going to seed our database with certain data. This is data that I've already prepared. So we are not going to include create, read, update, and delete functionality regarding the creation and maintenance of product data at this stage we are going to seed our database with product-related data. We are going to seed our database with the relevant data so that we can move directly to the creation of our shopping cart functionality. So in order to seed the database appropriately, we can override a method that exists within the DB context base class. This method is named onModelCreating. An easy way to generate the relevant override code for this method through Visual Studio is to type in the word override and then press the spacebar. We can then select the on model creating item from the drop down list presented to us within Visual Studio. I have already prepared the code for seeding our database, and this code can be found at this location on GitHub. So let's go to the appropriate GitHub location and copy this code to our clipboards. Let's then paste the code from our clipboards into the onModelCreating method. The next step is to let Entity Framework Core know, as it were, about our entities. 
So we can do this by using the entity framework core, DB set generic type. So for each of our entities, we need to appropriately include a public property of type DB set within our shop online DB context class. We are now ready to generate a migration using EF Core. I'd like to tell you about Brilliant.org. Brilliant.org is a platform used by millions that provides a fun and interactive way of learning STEM subjects. At Brilliant, you'll practice real-world problem solving that helps you train your critical thinking and problem solving skills. Every problem comes with a step-by-step -step solution that helps you understand the reason for each step. Courses are available for all knowledge levels and all ages from 10 to 110. So you'll almost certainly find something that interests you. The concept is first explained and why it actually matters. The intuitive ideas behind the topics like algebra, statistics or algorithms and more are taught. You'll come to understand how STEM actually works and how it is relevant to your everyday life. Personally, I'm really looking forward to following this course on Python. Python is an excellent object-oriented programming language, one of the best languages used in data science applications. This course on algorithms looks great. Understanding how certain algorithms work, coupled with a good knowledge of certain data structures, is essential for professional developers as well as aspiring developers. I'm fascinated by quantum mechanics and would love to learn more about it. So these courses related to quantum mechanics and quantum computing, including this course on Microsoft's programming language, q a language built to control real, near-term quantum computers, is very appealing. All of Brilliant's courses are crafted by award-winning teachers, researchers, and professionals from MIT, Caltech, Duke, Microsoft, Google, and more. This is an excellent platform that almost anyone can use to increase their knowledge on STEM subjects. I highly recommend signing up for your one-week free trial with Brilliant. By signing up after clicking the appropriate link that I've included below in the description, and if you convert to an annual subscription once your one-week free trial period has completed, you can get 20% off the annual subscription price. So this is a great deal offered by Brilliant to the viewers of this channel. So let's launch the NuGet Package Console Manager window from within Visual Studio, like this. We can then type the appropriate command to generate a migration. So let's type in add-migration followed by the name of the migration we wish to create. So when I run the add-migration command, I get an exception. I've found out that this exception occurred because at present the shoponline.web project is set to my startup project within the relevant solution. So if you get this exception, all you need to do to fix this is make the shoponline.api project your startup project, like this. So let's try again. And now we don't get the exception and it works as expected. And you can see code within the up method of the migration class that we have just generated 
this code creates our database and the relevant tables. This method also contains code that seeds the relevant database tables with the data that I prepared prior to creating this video. The down method contains code to undo the changes made by code contained within the up method. To run our migration, all we need to do is type the update-database command within the NuGet Package Manager console window, like this, and then of course press enter. And now, if we look at SQL Server Management Studio, we can see that the Shop Online database has been created. The database tables have been appropriately created based on the entities we created using c -sharp classes. The relevant database tables have been seeded with the data created from the code we included within the onModelCreating method, which resides within the Shop Online DB Context class. The data with which we have seeded our database contains product and user information. This has been done so that we can focus on the shopping cart functionality and not worry at this stage about implementing code for create, read, update, and delete functionality regarding products sold by our fictional online store. Here are just a few notes about running migrations. Please note that if you have run a migration or more than one migration, and are not happy with the changes made to the database, you can undo the changes made by running this command, update-database followed by a zero. The number zero is a special case that means before the first migration and causes the effects of all migrations to be rolled back. You may wish to remove the migrations after this. You can remove a migration that has not yet been used to update the database by running the command remove-migration. The remove-migration command will remove the last migration that has not yet run. Note that if, for example, you have updated the database with multiple migrations and you wish to roll back the changes to before a particular migration was run, you can roll back your changes to that particular state by running the migration that was run directly before the migrations that were run that contain the changes you wish to roll back. I hope you have enjoyed the first part of this video series on creating a shopping cart application using Blazor WebAssembly and Web API. We have now created a solid foundation for our e-commerce solution. Please join me in the next video, which is coming soon, where we'll start to develop the shopping cart functionality. For content like this and much more, please consider subscribing. And please ring the bell so as to be notified of future content. If you liked this video, please hit the like button and please feel free to share this video with anyone you feel may benefit from its content. If you'd like to thank me by buying me a coffee, I've included a link to my Buy Me A Coffee webpage. I've also included a PayPal Me link that you can use to support the channel via PayPal. Any support is greatly appreciated. It keeps the channel going. A special thank you to those who have been kind enough to support the channel so far. It is greatly appreciated. I really enjoy engaging with you in the comments section, so please feel free to leave a comment. The latest code can be found on GitHub. A link to the relevant repository has been included below in the description. Thank you, and take care.